uh, I was born May 16, 1944, up in the West Coast. Yeah, I was born in West Coast uh, on the top line. I, I didn't speak English for a long time until I went to residential school for eight years. They, they took me away from the family when I was five years old. So, uh, I, I, because I didn't understand, neither the other kids, and I guess that was a bad year because I didn't know why I was pushing the corner there or something. And when I got into a fight, you know, I couldn't speak up for myself because I, I didn't know why I was there. On the second year, I caught on so I could talk to other girls. And then that's when I started to make friends. They even asked me, when's your birthday? I don't even know what a birthday is. So uh, uh, there was another girl in my class. Her name is Christine uh, Germain. They measured me with her and she was born June 4th, 1944, so they put my birthday with her, and I, had, I didn't bother to change it because it'll take a lot of paperwork. <laughs> Can you stick camp here? The trail right there. The family used to camp here in summertime, and then when Dad go on a hunt, there was no trees here. You could see other horses coming from the other side, the creek. We used to camp here in the fall, and before winter, we'd move in the camp. And we always looked for Dad. We'd come up on a hill to see if the horses were coming. Yeah. days when we were young, after we come out of school, we had to go up to the lake so mom and them could get their dry meat and everything. So they just swim the horses across here, up there. And then uh, they, they, they put us across with a boat and we all go by foot trail, other side. And some of us ride horses, huh? Oh, okay. We stop for lunch. And then uh, sometimes it be too late to make camp before they get to end up the lake, and then from there it's good. Oh. Because you could ride up there with a boat and everything. And then they dad got those long poles yeah. to, to bring, you know. They didn't have motorboat, they didn't know what it was. But he used to make skin canoe out of moose height. Oh. Only mom said you got to sew six height together, so that's a lot of uh, moose. And after the pitch gum, he boil it like a tar. And he take uh, something like, the, you know, those coal bar that uh, flat like that. He heats it up a little bit because it's a moose height. Huh? Yeah. And after the pit come cool off, he smeared the whole bottom with it. Oh. And then he, 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 he just put a cool iron over it and the pit come, it uh, dries into the height. Oh. And then that, so the boat wouldn't leak at all.
summer, their summer camp and they stay there until fall time and then they pack everything back up here because they, uh, they're going to live here for the winter. Huh? And by that time, Mom had all most of her height done and everything, and dry meat and everything. And then the highway was being built at that time, and they got help from other people. Like now that they find out there's, uh, there's a saw and axe and knife and everything, which is very unusual. They didn't have it in their younger years. Huh? And some of the things that the cook brings over, mom didn't know what it was, like cans. Eh? She just turned it over and over. She didn't know what it was. And then he come over, tried to explain to her what it is. She couldn't make head or tail. Yeah, and there was one guy in, that come to the camp and he always, uh, they, they show him stuff to tell them what you call this, what you name this. And he always, and they ask him for his opinion, what they think about the trail and everything. He, he always said, I presume it, you know. And so they name him, I presume. <laughs> Every time he come to the camp, I presume is the I <laughs> He gave, they give, you give yourself a name, yeah. So that's how they, they, they name them. And if you kind of overactive in a camp, they, they say, uh, you know, and that's what you get, that's the name you get. <laughs> and if you, you're shy and stuff like that were drawn, they call you stuck up. And, and they go like this. That guy is coming, that shy guy is coming, they tell you. Maggie and Rose, they still talk like that. Mancho Lake, it's just a big body of water. That's all it is. That's in Mancho Indian language. Mancho, body. you know, anything that's big, they call it cho oh. in Indian language. So if you say da cho, it means this man is heavy set. Mom, she lived a hard life. She had 15 children. Dad had two wives. The first, the first uh, wife got uh, 11 children, all boys and two girls. That mom's older sister, that were Walter, Billy, and Oscar, there, from the first wife. When she died, mom brought up the kids. And then she got her, her kids after, yeah. And she had hard time with the kids, no babysitter. She had to tie most of them up. You know how kids get into mischief? She tied them up so they wouldn't get lost or something. And summertime, she's uh, doing the height, huh? you know, those uh, height, after she scraped the height, she heat up water and she put those things in the water and then she mix it and she she put some of them on their hand and it uh, it dry on their hand. They gotta take out that glue like they they work on it all day. That's how that was her babysitter. Yeah. Crazy. And she said she got more problems with boys than she does the girls. Yeah, he said they were more into mischief, too active eh, for her. Yeah, and when they moved camp, they had to pack everything. Like we said, she's got three little kids, one in the back, two in the arm, and how often she rests. And she had to get to the next camp. This one goes all the way. Back there to where we drove in, and uh, this is the hill he all come down. And, yeah, it leads all the way, and he goes to the cabin. Even the people from the state they come up just to look at the the cabin. Yeah, this when used to uh, 
Mom old stove is still there. Yeah. Oh, look at Mom old cook stove. Oh, that was the stove. Yeah. Awesome. How many years she could yeah, have cooked stove was years. right here. And their bed was over there. And the, the stove was right here. And right here was little kitchen, table there and everything. Yeah, and there's a trail going up that hill and goes up to the highway. And then my brother's cabins were up there. Where they from here? That's where they live. When was this built? 1938. Yeah. Maybe it was uh, 37, 36, and 38. He started on it. He, he worked on it on and on. Mom said everything was so new to them because in them at that time, her sister, she just lost her sister and the dad's first wife. And he left uh, four young boys w behind. So mom had to bring them up too. So she's got a more kit than she could shake a stick at. And she couldn't get Rose and them to babysit. They were just young too. Huh? So that's why she tied up most of the kids, Lucy and uh, Elsie to one tree. And then some of the kids were on the swing you know, on the bl make with blankets, eh? that kind of swing. Yeah. And they had to stay there until she's done working. But she always keep an eye on them, just so uh, they wouldn't get into mischief or trouble. Eh? Yeah, and they got a meat hook hanging over the fire. That's for teapots and big pots like that when she's cooking something. And one day, she heard somebody yelling and screaming here, Angus was dangling on his, uh, his uh, bridges or one of the pants caught up on that. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but he said the fire must have died down, lucky, eh? And he was swinging on that hook. Mom just come yelling, oh, you're going to get burned. Yeah, and that's why she tied them up, tied them up or do something to keep them themselves busy, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And they do make their own Indian medicine. When I was small, Angus and I, uh, I fell in a fire. I think I was, uh, two years old. So I got burned real bad here, up here and right here. I still got scar right here, all over here. And mom, what she used was those uh, fire wheat. She boiled them and she bathed me with that fire wheat and everything. Yeah. Cold bunch, she get the girl to help them and you remember that in dry intestine you seen? Yeah. She stuffed that with berries and she put the uh, moose grease on top to preserve it. And then she put it away for the winter and then around Christmas they take it out for the elders, they thaw it out and they serve them. Think of me, she give me some dry meat. In. That's nice. Mom and the river was way down there at that time. There was, you can't see the river at that time. No, it's nothing but trees. It just lately, uh, it, it's like that. Yeah, the bank kept, you know, like the water Same kept further, changing yeah. the course. You can't see the, the water from here. It's just nothing but trees and bush oh. at that time. Yeah. Because Meg and them used to walk up there to get the creek water from there. Yeah, there's a foot, foot trail all the way in the bush to get water from there. Oh. And then there's a slough up there. That's where Mom used to fish. Oh. Yeah, she catch uh, trout or something. Yeah, he what? make homemade paddle out of those uh, 
It's not a poplar tree. What does he use? Um, birch. Oh, okay. He said birch lasts a long time, eh? And he he uh, chop it and chop it until he shape it like an ore. Yeah. You know, those uh, thing you use. Yeah. That's what. And they, it takes them. Uh, he dries it, eh? In a house or something, or where the, the good weather, they hang it up. And it dries like that, and they, they light after yeah. they dry. Yeah. They light, yeah. Huh. There's a lot of homemade things they they make themselves to keep themselves going. Yeah, yeah. And this, you see these mountains in front there? Yeah. Called rivers on the other side. Okay, so these are what you see from Mancho on it's the other side. From Mancho, yeah. Oh. So we're the other side of Mancho, right there. Huh. And they, they go, they camp winter time way up there and they, they, uh, they, you know, wherever they get game, dry, you know, meat or something. Water? Yeah. Those um, moose intestine, like the kind yeah. I show you, only they take the bigger one inside and they wash it, they dry it, and that's what they, they pack water with. Oh. Wow. And they said, like, uh, the poplar, Mom used to say her dad take the poplar bark. Huh? I don't know how we used it. I think uh, after he boiled it, and then he crushed it, they harden up. Huh? And that's what they use for soap. Really? Yeah. Really? A popular soap, <laughs> they call <laughs> it, yeah. Out of the popular bike. Yeah. Yeah. Versus popular. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it's something it's like, um, uh, it's something like, right. um, uh, dove soap. Like the dove yeah. soap. Yeah. It don't have too much sun. Yeah. But it sure clean your skin. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And it kills the germs too. Yeah. Bacteria. Yeah. And same thing like with the pitch gum is good to draw out pus with too. Oh. Yeah. While it's warm, you can put it over where you infect it and then after it dries on your skin and you can take it out, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff on it, it draws. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. They use a lot of uh, medicine trees just for healing and stuff like that, you know. But they all have very good properties, you know, for medicine. Like when you're in the wilderness, you got to have, uh, you know, use what to do it. and yeah. what to use and everything. Yeah. Sure. When I was 16, this guy proposed, and I don't, in them days, this is an awful story, but I didn't know what a proposal was. I thought a guy just come out right and say, well, you marry or something, and it's up to you, eh? But he kept saying, uh, you know, I'd love to go with you. I'm going to talk to your dad soon. I thought, oh, what do you want to talk to dad for? <laughs> and it was hard for me to understand. And then one day he wrote to me in residential school, which was a love letter. And the principal got upset. So he called me to his office. The nun came and got me and said, uh, uh, Father Lebeck wants to talk to you. No one. I thought it was about my business. <laughs> and he, he opened this letter and he said, I don't like what he says in there. I thought, gee, what could it be? And he said, uh, if this keep on, what, what what's going to happen? So he wanted to put a stop to it. It's so nice down here. Yeah. I like to get away from the house like that. Yeah. You know, it's so relaxing. Mm -hmm. You know, so not quiet. feel like you need to be doing something. <laughs> yeah, like I uh, don't want to face the four walls all day and <laughs> yeah. then all night again. Yeah. And, uh, 
Sometimes I go for a walk and just hope, gee, I wish there was somebody here who would have walked a little further. Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, if you don't know what you're up against in a bush, I said, if you're not prepared, forget it. You'll either starve or freeze to death or you're going to get attacked by animal, and, you know, you got to be aware of a lot of things like you do, like you go to town, huh? You know, like uh, you you got to know your friends, right? 